Well, let's have a look from Godfrey's viewpoint. Yeah, hear the engine notes rise as it goes round. <laughs> Absolutely right. Car very unsettled. In comes the race leader, Alan Simonson. The handover to Hector Lester. Now, this is uh, a car that was in championship contention coming into Rockingham, but that race one incident put them out, well, put Hector Lester out of the frame. So uh, he could still go for the final win of the year. Meanwhile, here comes Bradley Ellis closing in on Jonathan Cocker. So not only is the Aston not going up the order, it looks like it might soon be going back down the order. Out goes our erstwhile race leader. In dives Jonathan Cocker. Now will Bradley Ellis fall? Oh, and Wilcox is on as well. So that's second, third and fourth all on the pit lane together. No pressure, lads. No, none at all for Paul Jason, not much. Championship lead with uh, what he knows are faster co-drivers waiting to get in around him. He's really got a lot of work to do. And for Jonathan Cocker, he's done what he can. Meanwhile, Hector Lester trying to bring the Ferrari back up to speed, get a feel for it straight out of the pits, and hopefully retake the lead. You say about the drivers, Martin, but uh, Drayson has put in some cracking drives this year, so I mean, it's all to play for still. Certainly right, and of course they do have that two-point advantage, which almost means that they can finish behind their rivals and still win it. Well, pit lane interview for uh, Bradley Ellis. He's looking quite relaxed, isn't he? And so he should do, but I think Jonathan Cocker is feeling the pressure. Maybe his second British GT title is starting to slip away from his grasp. It's all down now to Paul Drayson and Alex Mortimer, son of RPM team boss Robin Mortimer. So uh, <laughs> there's an awful lot at stake here, Matt. You've really got to feel the pressure in those cars. Well, yeah, you'd have to say Mortimer is the, probably the quicker driver out of he and Drayson, but the Aston has got track position, and track position is worth a lot. That's absolutely right, and of course, as long as the Ferraris stay one and two, then the major gaps in the points are soaked up, and the Ferraris are one and two. Alan, that was a good start and a good um, start to the race. Yeah, it was. It was all about trying to make a gap for Hector. Um, we uh, we have a very good setup on the car for this track, uh, which seems to give us the edge when the tyres start going off. Um, so we we'll just cross fingers and hope that he can keep it out there in front like he did at Croft. On board with Paul Drayson in front is second place, Phil Burton's Ferrari. Look at the run he's got going, Matt. He's looking for the pass. That's a serious toe he's got there, and he's looking to the inside, but... Oh, no! Oh, and off he goes, but he avoids everything solid. Long, looping spin for Paul Drayson. Now he's got to get back on track very quickly. That is disaster. Now he's going the long way round, Matt. He's going to go all the way round the oval, but he mustn't rejoin in front of them or he'll have to hand the places back. So now, even worse, look, the Ferrari, delayed by that battle, has now got the Viper right behind. So Mortimer chasing Burton. He's got a run going on the inside. This will be for second place, depending where Paul Drayson comes back on, of course, and he passes him very easily. Nice clean pass of Morse, he slips through the inside. But of course the pressure is on him, Matt, because he's behind in the points, he was behind in the race. Here we see it again. Drayson looking to the inside, the pass is not really on, Ferrari breaks too late and Drayson just... Whoa. In fact, just out of shot, the Ferrari very nearly went off into the tyres as well. That was a monumental outbreaking incident. Now then, Paul Jason rejoined, but he was in front of the Viper and the Ferrari. So Drayson at the moment, uh, illegally, I suppose you'd say, in second place, makes it pretty easy for Alex Mortimer to go by on the inside. But now he's got to latch on behind him and not let him escape and then try and repass because at the moment with the Viper pair in second and the Aston in third, they'll tie on points, but the Vipers already got more race wins and would take the title. And worse than that, as Drayson squirms off the corner, the Ferrari is closing back in as well. They're in traffic. Could it be any worse, Matt? Well, now Mortimer's in front. He's just got to get his head down and go, go, go. The last thing he wants is the Aston being able to have another stab back at him. And Diana's in the Aston pit. Johnny, you had a, you had a good start and a, first, a good first stint to that race. Yeah, um, our car just wasn't great during that stint at all, so I don't know. Um, the Viper's in front of us now, and I, I think as it is, they'll finish on the same points, but they would win the championship on wins, so gutted, really. 
Mortimer and Ellis have the points lead if they finish the race as they are now. And it looks as though the Aston is really struggling, Matt. Yeah, the rear of the car just looks sliding all around the place. And, I mean, look at the Viper. He can take a much tighter line coming out onto that start finish straight. And he's got a good run going. He's not lacking anything in power. Now then, the Ferrari is in front. Drayson going around the outside. Oh, no, he's slowing right down. Oh, my goodness, there's the Morgan. That's why he was slowing right down. Well, Jason looking for an outside run to try and get by the Ferrari for third, loses fourth in the process to Nick Foster. So the second RPM Viper going very quickly.